Welcome to the Balancing Act. I'm Olga Villaverde. And I'm Montel Ward. Today we're learning more about Wilson disease. It's a chronic disorder that's characterized by copper accumulation in organs and tissues. Wow. Plus contact lens solutions for those who struggle to see things up close. And the benefits of fermented skin care. Balancing Act starts right now. It's a rare chronic disorder characterized by copper accumulation in organs and tissues that if left untreated may result in liver, neurologic and psychiatric symptoms that progress over time. Wow. Well, today, let's hear from two specialists who each play key roles in the diagnosis of and management of this disease. But first, let's meet Ed, who waited almost 50 years to get diagnosed. Let's go behind the mystery of Wilson disease. I grew up in Tampa, Florida and went to high school there and went to college there. I moved to Marietta, I raised a family, I have three kids, been financing most of my life. When I was in my late teens, I started to experience uh, severe muscle spasms, wake up in the morning and they would start progressing during the day. I noticed a, a lot of uneasiness, came to a crescendo probably between high school and college and specifically when the phone would ring and that first ring, I'd just kind of jump out of my skin. And I thought, well, there's something wrong here. First thing I did, I went to the, the uh, college doctor and, and he said, well, I just think you're just, it's college pressure. And then I started having gastro issues, went to the gastro doctor and he said, well, uh, sounds like you may, rather than nervousness, you may have anxiety. And that kind of started the ball rolling to, to get more and more down the road towards, you have some, uh, psychological issues and maybe some neurological issues. I was raising a family and I just I uh, just coped with it as best I could. The Balancing Act traveled to New Haven, Connecticut to meet with Dr. Michael Shilsky, medical director of adult liver transplant at Yale New Haven Transplantation Center, who has 40 years of experience managing Wilson disease patients. Wilson disease is an inherited disorder of copper metabolism that is due to a defect in a gene known as ATP7B. When this gene is defective, copper accumulates in the liver and then other organs, such as the central nervous system, the cornea and other places in the body. The accumulation of copper over time causes liver disease, neurologic and or psychiatric symptoms. In untreated Wilson disease, patients experience progressive advanced liver disease, which can lead to liver failure and death. The majority of Wilson disease patients experience symptoms between ages 5 to 35. However, there have been patients diagnosed in their 70s and 80s. In the beginning when patients may or may not have symptoms of their disease, you can detect the disease by elevations of liver tests that can be found on a blood test. And this may indicate inflammation or hepatitis of the liver. This inflammation leads to more advanced scarring and eventually to cirrhosis and eventually liver failure. Due to the inflammation in the liver, uh, vague signs of liver injury, which often include fatigue, jaundice, portal hypertension, which is an increase in pressure caused by the resistance of the liver to blood flow through it. This can cause accumulation of fluid in the abdomen, there may also be anemia. An enlarged spleen may also occur in patients with this portal hypertension. We also met with Dr. Amar Patel, Assistant Professor of Neurology at Yale Medicine, to understand the neurologic and or psychiatric symptoms patients may experience. In Wilson's disease, the abnormal accumulation of copper in the brain causes damage and directly leads to the neurological, psychiatric, and behavioral effects of the disease. The neurological symptoms of Wilson's disease typically occur later in onset than those with liver symptoms, on average around the age of 30. Neurological symptoms include movement disorders such as tremor or involuntary movements, drooling, slurred speech, migraine headaches, 
insomnia, and seizures. The psychiatric symptoms of Wilson's disease can include anxiety, depression, personality changes, neurotic behaviors, and even psychosis. The neurological and psychiatric symptoms of Wilson's disease can affect patients' mobility and their mood and how they think, so it can certainly affect their quality of life in day-to-day -day activities. Patients often have to see a number of specialists before they reach a diagnosis, and this can be very challenging for them as early intervention is key to the management of the condition. Well, as I got older, I started having concentration issues, impulsiveness. I lived in 15 houses in 21 years. When you're trying to raise a family and you're moving a lot, that just put stress on top of stress and made the anxiety worse. It became harder and harder to sleep, and that's why I started seeing a lot of doctors. And uh, I would go from one to the other and get the same result we don't know what's wrong. I started having walking issues and tripping in the, sometimes in a crowded area. It became very embarrassing at times. Now, muscle spasms uh, continued, moved up to the shoulders, just kind of, I just kind of managed it from there through different therapies. I saw several doctors. I saw gastroenterologists. I saw neurologists. I saw chiropractors. Uh, I saw uh, orthopedic what they were doing is treating symptoms. I just kept thinking, something's wrong, this isn't normal. I just wondered what was wrong with me. Wilson disease affects approximately one in 30,000 to one in 67,000 people worldwide. A close friend of mine recommended that I go to a renowned clinic to find the cause of all my symptoms. The main takeaway from my visit to that clinic was that my blood copper was low. I wanted a second opinion, so I went to see an endocrinologist. The endocrinologist thought that my copper level would in, may indicate Wilson's disease. After the 24-hour urine test and the blood test, it was recommended that I get a liver biopsy. The liver biopsy revealed that I had 33 times normal copper in my liver. The doctor recommended I have the genetics test to, to see if I had a mutation of the gene that causes Wilson's. That was the first time that it had been confirmed that I had Wilson's. I was relieved to say I finally have a name for this. The American Association for the Study of Liver Diseases, co-authored with Dr. Shilsky, is one journal that summarizes the guidelines for diagnosing Wilson disease. To determine if a patient has Wilson disease, we look for both certain physical signs and biochemical tests that allow us to establish the diagnosis. These include blood tests, which may indicate development of more advanced liver disease, blood tests that may look at proteins such as ceruloplasmin, which is a copper protein, Kaiser Fleischer ring, which can be seen by an ophthalmologist, on slit lamp examination, urine copper excretion over a 24-hour period. In some patients, measurement of the copper alone in the circulation may be difficult to interpret and cannot be used as a diagnostic test by itself. A liver biopsy can also aid in the diagnosis of Wilson disease, both by the pattern of injury to the liver as well as measuring the liver content of copper. The ability to do genetic testing for Wilson disease has aided in diagnosis, but it does have its limitations. Testing is not always available worldwide. Genetic testing has been extremely useful to help screen the family. Diagnosing Wilson's disease may be very challenging because physicians may not encounter this rare condition and need to be trained to recognize the rare or atypical features of the condition that can lead to a diagnosis. Patients with unexplained liver disease and neurological or psychiatric disorders should be screened for the possibility of Wilson's disease. With respect to diagnosis and management, we still have unmet needs for this patient population. Once Wilson disease is diagnosed, it requires a lifetime of medical therapy. Liver transplantation for Wilson disease is reserved for patients with advanced liver failure. The current needs for Wilson disease are more treatment options that may be safe and effective, well tolerated and potentially help mitigate the risk of uncontrolled symptoms. For a newly diagnosed Wilson disease patient, I think it's important to know that there is hope, there are a large community out there of physicians and patients who are advocating on their behalf. After I was diagnosed, I wanted to search for a great care team of specialists that could help me with the Wilson's disease. And that created a great support group and found out that there were many people suffering a lot more than me. It's worth it to say, hey, you got through it all. Somehow, you're here. 
And, you know, that's satisfying. For more information on Wilson disease, you can visit wilsondisease.org, liverfoundation.org, and rarediseases.org. And, of course, you can always go up on our website, thebalancingact.com. We'll be back right after this. There's more stress than ever in our eyes. Exposure to things like our digital devices, time spent in front of screens, reading our tablets, these can all add up to worsen our vision and give us eye strain. That's right. And for adults, this can mean struggling to see things up close, otherwise known as presbyopia. Uh, telescopia. Uh -huh. <laughs> in fact, one billion plus people around the world are living with it. Including me. So <laughs> today, we're going to learn more about a comfortable solution that'll keep things in focus. And we need that. Joining us are optometrist Dr. Kurt Moody, Director of Professional Education at Johnson & Johnson Vision, Dr. Katherine Larkin from Lens Crafters, and her patient, Luisa Bravo. Welcome to all of you. Welcome, guys. Thank, Thanks thank so much you for so being much here. for having us. Look, Dr. Larkin, you know, I've been holding my iPhone and objects that I read a little bit further away these days. <laughs> Let's begin uh, with, why, why is this all happening? What's the basis? Right, right. So this is the most common question we get in practice. Presbyopia is a fancy name, but it really just stands for the change in the uh, way that our eye focuses. So when we're young, it's very flexible, and uh, we're able to see close, far, and in between. As we age past 40, it becomes very rigid and we can't focus the same, making reading things difficult. So we reach for the readers or, mm. you know, this is normal though. It's a normal part. A lot of people call it the aging eye. But yeah, we all need some help at some point. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And like she said, Dr. Moody, we try to compensate, you know, mm -hmm. Montel, right? Mm -hmm. Some people bring it closer. <laughs> and that can, make, that can make it difficult. I know you've spent a lot of your career trying to find a better solution for, for those out there. I mean, it's a billion plus. It's a big, big group. You're right. And there's the traditional types of corrections, you know, the reading glasses, the bifocals, the trifocals, and even progressive lenses. So that's all within the eyeglass realm. But there's also contact lenses. You know, we're familiar with monofocal contact lenses. They correct myopia, hyperopia, and astigmatism, but there's also multifocal contact lenses. Contact lenses that will correct for presbyopia. Mm. Wow. Uh, before we go into some of the detail about that, Louise, why don't you tell us about what's been going on with your eyes? Well, at the beginning, I hate glasses. So I start wearing the AccuView Moist for a little bit for the distance. Um, at the end of the day, it was a little bit of dryness and tired of the contact lenses, and I started working out. So it was kind of difficult for me to look at my watch. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started saying, okay, this is not right. And working out with glasses is not a comfortable thing. No, no, it's not, yes. not at all. So, so what did you prescribe for Luisa and why? So Luisa, she was very, very patient. She had tried different contacts in the past and I said, let me offer you something new. And she got excited mm -hmm. because she'd always had problems focusing far, but now all of a sudden it was a reading issue. So I said, let's combine the technology for far and close and try this multifocal. Look at that. She loves AccuView mm -hmm. lenses mm -hmm. in general, yeah. and she knew that the moisture would provide her all day comfort and it has UV protection. So she was really excited as active as she is. Love oh, that. Dr. Woody, tell us a little bit about the technology behind the AccuView Oasis multifocal lens. Yeah, I'd love to. So when we're looking at these multifocal lenses, the two big obstacles have always been vision and comfort. So what we came upon was the fact that your pupil size is very, very critical in regards to how well these lenses will work. What we found was that as we age, our pupils become smaller and there's a continuum of pupil size based on your degree of nearsightedness or farsightedness. So we took that knowledge and we actually created a very unique optic that's personalized to that unique pupil size. We combined that optic in the material that you just heard about, a material that's never been beaten in regards to comfort, our Oasis material, and we think we have a winning combination there. Talk about taking it to the next level, Very right? Cool. She yeah. likes it. Now, you're not kidding. It. How much do you like it and how I much can it. Luisa do well, today? <laughs> oh my God. I get up early in the morning at 4.30 and I put it on and I work out all day and work with devices too. So change it to the phone, to the tablet, to the computer, it makes a big difference. And with the I kids and the hustle and bustle. Yes. Right. 
and I, I have the contact lenses for 9, 10 hours, and it, it feels great. Oh, she adapted great. very quickly, so yeah. that was mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah, the bottom line is prioritize your eyes mm -hmm. and your vision, right? That's right. Exactly. Yep. For our viewers, uh, Dr. Larkin, Dr. Moody, where can they go to learn more? Well, to find out if AccuView Oasis Multifocal is right for you, you can go to AccuView.com where you can get some information on how you can get a free pill. Okay. And prevention is the best medicine, so get your comprehensive eye exam and do that at LensCrafters.com. You can schedule your Clarify eye exam and your contact lens fitting. That's great. If you want more information, of course, you can go to our website, TheBalancingHack.com. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank, Thank you so much. much. to our skincare regime, we want something that is clean, natural, and effective. Today we're learning more about K-Beauty Collection that has something for all types of skin and ages. And the secret is in the fermentation. Haru Haru CEO Jay Jung joins us virtually from South Korea with more. Welcome to the show, Jay. Hello, this is Jay. You made my day. It is a highlight of my day. So thank you for having me. Oh, it's great to have you. You know, I have various products here with me and some great looking women who are so anxious to try it. But first I want to talk about your star ingredient, which is fermented black rice. Why is that important? As you know, black rice is already rich in antioxidant compounds as it is. But when it is fermented, its antioxidation -oxid power dramatically jumps. We took advantage of that and applied it to daily skincare for maximum results. Anthocyanin, polyphenols, and flavonoids, the famous antioxidants in black rice that increase in power during the fermentation process. They are particularly beneficial to skin because of their broad spectrum of antioxidant activity, it helps to avoid multiple types of oxidative skin damage and fungal skin. That's wonderful. I, I gotta say, beautiful and effective formulas that are sourced by nature. And I'm gonna add, it smells fantastic. I love it. We don't use any synthetic artificial fragrance for our products, but due to subtle fragrance of lavender, some of our customers think that it is formulated with artificial fragrance, but it is not. Even the lavender essential oil is naturally extracted. The packaging is eco-friendly and so cute. I mean, this is beautiful. This is such a nice gift for one of my best friends. Actually, we won all of the three major design awards, IF Design Awards and Red Dot Design Awards and International Design Excellence Awards for packaging and communication design in 2019 and 2020. And also, I proudly present our environment-friendly packaging. They are all recyclable paper and printed with soy ink. So, Jay, I'd like to introduce you to two beautiful ladies who are with me here in the studio today. This is Sydney. So happy you joined us. And this is Lauren. Okay, so I know I'm looking for something that's anti-aging, right? Because I'm the oldest one here. So tell me about your skin type. I have very dry and sensitive skin, so I'm looking for something that's hydrating, but also the eco-friendly is a great touch, and I've been looking for something like that. Mm, you Have you tried a lot of stuff and just not happy? Just nothing has worked. Exactly. Lauren? I have super oily and sensitive skin, and I'm looking for something that's going to help that out, and also fragrance has been an issue, so fragrance-free. And this is fragrance-free. Have you it. tried it? Oh my Put gosh. some on your hands, because I gotta I tell you, wait. when I did it, it smells so doesn't good. it smell fantastic? Yes. And again, it's all natural, which oh, is great. That is a plus. You know, I, I brought these ladies, uh, Jay, because oh. I wanted to show, you know, versatility in terms of someone who's looking for her skin type and not worried about anti-aging like me, and the same with Lauren. So really, I think this is something that can help anyone, whatever skin type they have, right, Jay? All of our products are safe, vegan-friendly, and cruelty-free, so you can get healthy glow from our product. I believe that. Jay, for our viewers who'd like more information on Wonder, where can they go, darling? You can get them at haruharusa.com or at amazon.com. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us from South Korea. I hope to visit one day. I've never been there. Yeah, you should. 
and thank you for having me again. Thank you. My pleasure. And if you'd like more information on Wonder, go to our website, thebalancingact.com. So I got, you can take it. Yes, I know you want it. Give it a try. Give it a try. Thanks so much for joining us today. Remember to head to our Facebook page and our website and follow us on Twitter. And you know what you got to do. Stay safe, love your family, and we'll see you next time.